Threat hunting relies on data. Remember, no data, no hunt. Yet, it's the proper analysis and interpretation that unlock the mystery. Oh, hunters, data never lies. It merely waits for a keen observer to interpret its enigma. This episode breaks down essential data analysis techniques and requirements for threat hunting in a simple and easy to follow way. Real examples and case studies are featured along with tools and resources to support you at every stage. Hi, I am Esam Aslahi. Thanks for watching another episode of the Cyber Threat Hunt 1 on 1 series by Nothing Cyber. Remember to subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell to stay updated. Join me on LinkedIn for daily updates on technical tips, free resources, and cool open source tools. Three fundamental principles shape data analysis for threat hunting. Where is the data? What is normal? And how do we spot the troublemakers? In simple words, hunters apply various analysis methods to data collected from host and networks, user activities, and security solution logs, among many others, to spot threats by identifying unusual patterns, behaviors, or actions. The diverse digital landscape and evolving threats require us to gather data from multiple sources and employ a combination of techniques to hunt threats, ranging from well-known yet unattended to entirely unknown and challenging to detect. The ultimate goal of threat hunting is to catch the unknown unknowns, entirely new threats that haven't been detected, studied, and documented before. What about known knowns? They are often automatically detected and mitigated using rule-based and pattern-matching methods. Then why are they still in the game? Digital environments constantly evolve, and attackers get creative. Integrating all data sources and creating detection rules that seamlessly cover every possible scenario remains challenging. Beyond tools limitation and integration challenges, several factors can turn known knowns into unknown knowns, threats that we are aware of but fail to address effectively due to many reasons. Finally, in some cases, known unknowns exist in the gray area. We know the threat, but it has yet to be truly analyzed. We don't have accurate signatures, IOCs, and a complete understanding of their tactics, techniques, and procedures to fit our monitoring solutions and detection engines. Threat hunters use different data analysis techniques to tackle threats across the spectrum. But remember, as beginners, we are not supposed to cover the mountain and cover the sea in the early stage of our hunt journey. Start with a small scope, set a baseline for what's normal in a digital wonderland and build from there. Threat hunting, especially with behavioral analysis, is all about spotting anomalies, events, activities, or actions that deviate from the norms in our environment. We establish a baseline of normal behavior in users, networks, and systems by analyzing recent and historical data. This baseline becomes our reference point for identifying suspicious odd layers that might indicate a potential threat. Many factors can influence what is considered normal behavior. Not all normal is created equal. Generic norms are like universal traffic rules. Things such as using standard protocols and ports as they were intended to be used are considered normal everywhere. In contrast, context-specific norms are more like local customs. They are exclusive to particular scenarios and are deemed normal only in certain settings. High level of network traffic late at night might be typical for global businesses operating across time zones, while it might raise eyebrows in a strictly 9-to-5 office. What's considered normal in one setting may not be the case in another, and vice versa. This emphasizes the critical role of context and baseline across all data analysis techniques we use for a hunt. Threat hunting is not confined to a single method. It's a symphony of techniques that work together. For this 101 series, we cover the core ones, saving advanced analytics, machine learning, and AI for upcoming ones. Techniques in this session are explained in the specific order just to elaborate on the concept. Don't worry about the orders. Mix and match as needed. A basic search helps us identify and extract key pieces of evidence and entities from data 
like IP addresses, domain names, and user accounts. We can also add keywords to narrow down our search and find specific activities. The Threat Hunting Keywords Repository on GitHub offers a collection of keywords that can be utilized for threat hunting searches on different platforms. We can search for any keywords of interest or use a specific entities extracted from threat intel reports and security alerts, for example, and again, mix and match. I start with keywords to identify entities and actions, or use entities or a specific components of TTPs to refine keyword searches. No matter how we slice it, basic search help us narrow down the data high stack and focus on potentially malicious elements. Picture this. We collect our network traffic over a specific period, then use entity search to extract all the IP addresses interacting with our network. These IPs fall into three categories, known evil, known good, and unknown. No, we are not only targeting the known indicators here. That's not really a hunt. Known good IPs originating from reliable sources. These are generally trusted and deemed safe. However, they can still pose a risk if compromised, hijacked, or misused by attackers. Verify everything. Unknown IPs take center stage in this scenario, as we don't know what are they and why are they here. We should utilize various tools and techniques to gather more information about them and search for any sign of potential threats or issues. We should also understand how IPs or other entities under investigation operate within our environment. Are they solo acts or part of a larger clan acting in the coordination? While advanced techniques like classification and clustering can be powerful for grouping data, let's focus on building a solid foundation for now. Simple grouping. In this technique, we categorize data into distinct groups based on predefined characteristics and features. We use it when we have specific questions or investigation criteria in mind. We can refine our analysis by mixing criteria, like grouping by location and time, to check for IPs from certain areas active at certain hours. What else? Can we also figure out which IPs are the most and least active? Stack counting is an essential method for quantifying how often each distinct entity or event appears in collected data. We review the data set and tally each unique entity or event of interest as we observe them. Based on these counts, we can arrange the items in order, creating a list from the most to the least observed entities or events. A high count doesn't always equal a threat. Legitimate services or busy internal devices might have high activity. The real story lies in the nature of the interactions. For example, who is this IP mingling with? Link analysis, a technique rooted in graph theory, enables us to map connections between different pieces of information, actions, and entities to discover the trail of activities in an investigation. Every link mapped could be a bridge to additional relevant data points lurking in other sources that might be connected to what we started with and could be critical to understand the bigger picture. Let's zero in on the unknown IP that has shown the most interaction with our server and investigate any other connection it has made across the network, including systems, resources, and user accounts. Every new link extends investigation scope and uncovers more artifacts. To effectively manage these larger data volumes, we need advanced search techniques. A HAN query is a structured search statement that enables us to combine entities, keywords, and other filtering criteria to conduct more complex searches with flexibility, scalability, and speed. It could be as simple as specific values in a single field or a combination of multiple criteria using different logical operators and functions. Security monitoring and threat detection platforms employ a variety of query languages to extract, 
analyze and explore data gathered from sources like log files, network traffic, and endpoints. The exact way we write a query in different platform might differ, but fear not. The core concepts and underlying logic behind hunt queries remain the same. Once we grasp the core principles, adopting to a specific platform's query syntax becomes more manageable. MITRE Cyber Analytics Depository even offers pseudocode for queries, making it easier to understand their objectives before translating them into a specific platform's syntax. Here are other resources to study the threat on queries and detection rules. Each of these predefined queries and rules includes context about which sequence of actions and behaviors is considered malicious and why. Studying these queries helps us understand common attack patterns. Pattern matching mainly relies on a static approach, which compares collected data against a predefined set of known malicious patterns or detection rules. It's more like checking a list of red flags to see if any matches the observed activities. By mastering known attack patterns, we refine our analytical skills and become a pro at spotting the differences between normal and malicious activities. Yet, pattern matching is just the first act. While it's a powerful technique for identifying known threats, these patterns and events alone might not tell the whole story. Here is where correlation comes in to link various events together. But first, let's use the timeline technique to visually observe the sequence and timing of each event and activity. As the name suggests, a timeline is a visual reconstruction of what happened, when, and in what order. It's commonly used in digital forensics, incident response, and threat hunting to build a chronological sequence of events and activities. There are different ways to create timelines depending on what we are looking for, the scope of investigation, and resources. Many timelines often target a small time frame and just a few selected data sources, making them great for quick and targeted investigations. In contrast, super timelines paint a broader time frame and utilize every single data source available to create a complete picture of everything that happened. Timelines offer much more than just a sequence of events. They effectively enable us to identify long-term changes in data over time, including spikes and drops in activities. By adding numerical measures and statistics, we can quantify these changes and identify potential anomalies that might indicate a threat. Forget complex equations for no. Basic statistical metrics are easy to understand and calculate without fancy technical skills. There are several ways to put these metrics to work. One common approach is setting predefined thresholds. We set a specific limits or boundaries for what is expected. If anything goes beyond these limits, whether higher or lower, it tells us there might be something interesting to look into. Sometimes we might not have clear cut limits for what's expected. Instead, we look for significant fluctuations and surprising changes compared to the past or any other relevant time frame. We can also use these metrics for head-to-head -head comparison between individual users, devices, or applications by measuring them against counterparts with similar roles, function, and performance metrics. And finally, we can combine statistics derived from diverse datasets and multiple sources over time to provide a summarized perspective, enhancing the utility of these metrics. Data aggregation is the process of collecting and combining raw data from one or more sources over a specified period into one unified repository. Then, we can correlate these events or present them into a cohesive and summarized format, mainly utilizing simple statistical measures. Let's walk through an example aggregating failed login attempts over a week and comparing them to the baseline. This table showcases the sum of daily successful and failed login attempts within a week. 
It also represents the average number of failed login attempts observed in previous weeks as a baseline for comparison. From day one to four, the number of failed login attempts stays within the baseline range, which is five per day in this example. Day five, however, shows a significant increase in failed attempts triggering a potential anomaly flag. In this example, data aggregation simplifies the analysis by summarizing the raw data into manageable chunks, making it easier to identify malicious patterns and quickly hunt them. We can also use this summarized information to create charts, craft insightful reports, or fit them into powerful machine learning algorithms to look for sophisticated patterns and anomalies. In general, aggregated data sets the stage for more advanced analyses. For instance, have you ever wondered how often a specific event occurs within your environment? Data aggregation is one of the ways to calculate frequencies. Frequency analysis measures how often a specific events appear in our dataset and calculates the number of times each event occurs within a chosen time frame. Significant changes in frequency over time can point toward potential anomalies. Events happening much more or less frequently than expected might indicate a security threat. In our data aggregation example, we notice repeated login failures with high frequency. While alarming, the situation becomes more suspicious if these attempts are concentrated over a short duration. What if they spread throughout the day, which would be less concerning? Distribution analysis takes this a step further by looking at how these events are spread out over time or across different categories and group of entities. It helps us understand whether these attempts are clustered within a small time frame, which might be more suspicious, or spread throughout the day, which could be less alarming and possibly indicate normal user behavior. Frequency and distribution analyses are most powerful when used together. In fact, all the techniques we discussed to this point work best when used in conjunction with each other, especially when we apply them to the chain of events. Multi-stage attacks leave multiple traces everywhere. To understand the full scope of an attack, we can just focus on one event or action. Correlation connects seemingly unrelated behaviors, events, actions, or data points from the same or different sources to look for potential association between them to uncover the cause of an issue. On a large scale, we required specialized tools and platforms to collect data from different sources, aggregate and combine them into a unified repository, apply custom filters, remove duplicates, and convert them into a uniform format, normalization. These tools usually include several techniques to look for any associations and relation between these collected events and spot anomalies. With our tools, we can still apply the correlation concept to connect the dots and look for any connection between events and action on a smaller scale. For instance, timelines enable us to conduct temporal or time-based correlation to analyze events based on their timestamps and check if they occur at the same time, close together, or in a specific sequence. There are several other ways to correlate the events. As we continue our journey through data analysis techniques, we will explore the roles of visualizations and scripting. The next episode will demonstrate how these techniques can enhance our threat hunting capabilities. Stay tuned.